In this video, we're going to look at how to create numbered and bulleted lists. Numbered and bulleted lists are really identical in how they are used, but there is a distinct difference between the two when you are choosing which to use. It is generally accepted that you would use a numbered list when your list needs to be in a specific order. In other words, number of steps. So the first step is to put water in the kettle, the second step is to boil the water, the third step is to put coffee powder in a cup, etc. It's a, a series of steps that have to be in that order. A bulleted list is generally used when the order doesn't matter. For example, a shopping list, where you just need to buy crisps, biscuits, milk, and it doesn't matter what order you get those in. That's the kind of defined difference between a numbered and a bulleted list. But to all intents and purposes, they work in exactly the same way in Microsoft Word. Let's start a new document and see how to use this. We've got two icons on the toolbar. Well, just hover over them. Numbering, bullets. Numbering's got numbers one, two, three on it. Bullets has just got round dots. And if you can't see them on the toolbar, you might need to go to the end and toolbar options and choose them from there. To start a numbered or bulleted list, we simply click on the icon and it gives us that number one. And we just do the typing. Now the good thing about this is when you press the enter key, it automatically gives you that second numbered point. Put coffee in cup. Press the enter key, it automatically gives you that third step. Put water. On coffee. Spell it correctly. Now whenever you press the enter key you know you're going to get that next step and that's fine. To switch it off you just simply toggle the numbering icon. So clicking it remove that number four for me. If I click it again it'll add number four. You can actually use that feature on any one of these lines. If I decide boiling the kettle shouldn't be part of the numbered list I can simply click on that line and remove the numbering from that line. And it will automatically renumber the rest of the list. Put it back on again and it automatically renumbers that list. So it's just toggling that feature on and off. You can also switch between numbered and bulleted lists. So we've got a numbered list there for number one. I can click on the bullet item, but sorry, the bullet icon, and it switches that to a bulleted item and renumbers the rest of the list. Click back on one, two, three, and it switches back between them. Of course, if you wanted to do that with the whole list, you'd have to select it first and then switch to bullets and back to numbering. So start a new line, remove that numbering. Let's try a bulleted list to create a bulleted list from scratch. Simply click the icon. And start typing. Press the enter key, gives you the next bulleted item. Press the enter key, gives you the next bulleted item, and so forth. And to switch it off, simply click the icon again and it's removed. We've actually got a little bit more control than that. Start a new document. What we can do, rather than using these icons, we can use the menu, format, bullets and numbering. We've got two tabs that we're interested in, the bulleted tab and the numbered tab. Just look at the bulleted one. There's a whole range of bullets we can look at there. Let's use the ticks. So you select it and then OK. And you can see there that we've got a tick for the bulleted item. And every time we press the enter key, it gives us that tick. So we'll look at that again. Format, bullets and numbering. Choose the style that you want. And then click on OK, and that is being used. The numbering is exactly the same. We've got different number styles. If we want to use A, B, C instead of 1, 2, 3, we can do. We simply select it, click on OK, and I've now got A. Put water in kettle. Press the enter. We've now got B when I press the enter key. 
oil kettle. These icons are still in operation. I can still use those at any time, but I'm just getting a little bit more control by going into the menu system. Format, bullets and numbering. If I want to remove that uh, list, I can always click on none. So I'll show you that. You select the information that you're working with. So you select the list that you are working with and do format, bullets and numbering. You can remove the numbering by clicking on none. Same effect as using the icons. Finally, and going beyond what we actually need to do for the ECDL, if I just go into that menu system again, format, bullets and numbering. If I look at the bulleted list and choose one. We can actually use customize, bring up the customize list, and there's the bullets that we can use, but we can actually go into any of these icons, into any of these buttons, and choose something else. For example, I can choose font and choose any of the windings characters to choose those bullets from. I can go into character and choose any of these. So I could use a telephone as a bulleted item. You can even go into picture and find a picture from clip art that you like the look of and use those. I quite like the telephone, or the or there's some heart symbols there. Just use the telephone, click on OK, click on O. This bit here is all about the indents, and you can mess around with those and alter the indents, but that's not what we're going into today. Click on OK, and I've now got a telephone item that I can use for part of my list. So, bullets and numbered lists. The main thing is to recognise the difference between a numbered list which is used for items that have to be in a specific order, or a bulleted list that has to be used for things that don't have to be in a specific order. Other than that, it's just selecting your text and switching the features on and off. And I nearly forgot. One of the earlier videos, we looked at the soft carriage return, or the line break, and I said we'd come back to it. And this is one of those items where it can be really useful to use that soft carriage return. If you haven't seen that video, go back and have a look at it um, and then reflect on it in what I'm going to show you now. When you're creating a numbered list, bulleted list as well for that matter, but a numbered list, we might be writing all about football, for example. And we know that when we press the enter key, we're getting the next item in that list. The show hide, we press the enter key so we've got a paragraph mark. That might be all about uh, rugby. But what if we want to actually put some information in there? Well, we can do that. After the first numbered item, instead of pressing the Enter key, which you know will give you the next number, we can use the manual line break. That means that we're actually still in the same paragraph, therefore it doesn't give us another number. To get that, we hold down the Shift key and press Enter. You can see we've dropped down onto the next line, we haven't got a new number, and now I can write all about football and do as much typing as I want in my paragraph. I'm just doing some of my famous Russian writing, because I'm rushing. Now when I press the Enter key, I get the next numbered item. And I can type about rugby. Now to bring down to the next line without getting the number, we want a manual line break, so it's shift, enter, and now can type all about rugby, and so on and so forth. If I click on the show hide, you'll see the difference there. I've got my numbered list, football, manual line break. That means all this is one paragraph, and therefore, we've just got the one numbered item against it. When I press the enter key, I get the next paragraph or the next item in the list. Therefore, I get number two, which is all about rugby, manual line break, and then I can type underneath. That's really a very useful feature.